Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the solubility of group 2 hydroxides in water. You should then be able to explain why the alkalinity of the hydroxide solutions increases down group 2. And finally, you should be able to describe the uses of group 2 compounds in neutralization. In a previous video, we saw that group 2 metals react with water to produce the group 2 hydroxide. And I'm showing you that reaction here for calcium to form calcium hydroxide. Now you need to understand that the reactivity of group 2 elements with water increases down the group. For example, magnesium reacts extremely slowly with cold water, whereas barium reacts rapidly. Another way of making a group 2 hydroxide is to react a group 2 oxide with water. We can see that here with calcium oxide forming calcium hydroxide. Now, there's a key idea here that you need to understand. As the calcium hydroxide forms, it dissolves in the water to form calcium hydroxide solution. However, calcium hydroxide is only slightly soluble in water, so this solution very quickly becomes saturated. As we continue to form calcium hydroxide, this no longer dissolves, but instead forms solid calcium hydroxide. Now, there is one important trend which you need to learn. The solubility of the group 2 hydroxides increases down group 2. For example, magnesium hydroxide has an extremely low solubility in water, whereas barium hydroxide is relatively soluble in water. Now, this trend in solubility is important because it explains the alkalinity of the group 2 hydroxides. I'm showing you here calcium hydroxide dissolved in water. When group 2 hydroxides dissolve in water, they release the metal ion and two hydroxide ions like this. Now the aqueous hydroxide ions make the solution alkaline, and the concentration of the aqueous hydroxide ions determines the alkalinity of the solution. If we have a high concentration of hydroxide ions, then we have a high pH, in other words, a very alkaline solution. Now as we saw before, Magnesium hydroxide has an extremely low solubility in water, so this means that a solution of magnesium hydroxide only has a relatively low concentration of hydroxide ions. Because of this, a solution of magnesium hydroxide will have a pH around 10, in other words moderately alkaline. In contrast, barium hydroxide is relatively soluble in water, so a solution of barium hydroxide will have a higher concentration of hydroxide ions. Because of this, barium hydroxide solution will have a pH around 13, in other words, a more alkaline solution. So solutions of the group 2 hydroxides become more alkaline as we move down the group. Now, we can use group 2 compounds in neutralization reactions in agriculture and in medicine. For example, solid calcium hydroxide, which is also called lime, is often spread on fields. The calcium hydroxide neutralizes the acids in the soil, making the soil more favorable for crops. I'm showing you here the equation for the reaction between calcium hydroxide and a general acid. In this reaction, we produce water plus the calcium salt, which depends on the acid. Another use of group 2 compounds is to treat indigestion. Indigestion is often caused by excess hydrochloric acid in the stomach. We can treat this in two ways. A suspension of magnesium hydroxide in water is called milk of magnesia. This neutralizes hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride and water, which I'm showing you here. Alternatively, tablets of calcium carbonate can be eaten. Calcium carbonate neutralizes hydrochloric acid, producing calcium chloride, carbon dioxide and water. Now, you may be wondering why we don't use calcium hydroxide. That's because the alkalinity of calcium hydroxide would be harmful to body tissues, for example, the tissue lining the throat. In the next video, we're going to look at the properties of other group 2 compounds. 